So hello and welcome to this presentation by Queen Mary University of London. Um, my name is Josh Ibrahim and I'm the regional manager for Europe, CIS and Turkey. Also joining me on the panel today will be Petrova Lewis, who is our law marketing manager for the School of Law at Queen Mary uh, for postgraduate students. And we also have Samantha Heffernan, who is our program coordinator for the Center for Commercial Law Studies at Paris. Um, as we're going through this presentation, if you have any questions, please just include them in the chat box or the questions section. Um, me or one of the team will be able to get back to you as we're going through the presentation. Um, also, just before we start, I'd like to let you know that because this is a School of Law focused event, on the 11th of May, I will also be on a panel with a number of other universities with the IEFT talks um, on the 11th of May, just talking more in general about the, the programs that we offer at Queen Mary University of London. So just to give you a little bit of background, first of all, on the institution, we were established in 1785. Uh, we were an amalgamation of the London Hospital Medical College, St. Bartholomew's Medical College, Westfield College, and Queen Mary College. And we currently have nine Nobel Prize winners associated with the university. Uh, another really important thing to mention about Queen Mary is our global profile and the international outlook, which pervades all areas of our, our institution. So there's 162 different nationalities that currently study with us. Um, that goes, we're in the top 20 for our international outlook, according to the Times Higher Education as well. So that's based on the proportion of international staff, our students, and how globally recognized our research is. And we're currently ranked 12th in the UK and 110th in the world, according to the Times higher rankings. Obviously, I think the most pressing thing to speak about at the moment is the COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic, which is obviously affecting people across the globe. Um, before we start getting into the School of Law talk, I just wanted to give you an update on the contingency plans that Queen Mary has currently got laid out. So the first question that I'm guessing students will be asking is, is the program still scheduled to start in September? So currently, yes, we're still expecting a September start for all of our programs, but we are monitoring this situation and planning for various different scenarios. So this will include a mixture of online blended provision. So there's the potential that programs, if we can't start in September, will start for the first three months online and then campus study will begin in January. And there's also looking at the possibility of delayed or delayed or alternative start dates going through the academic year. These aren't fully confirmed yet, but these are the different options that we are currently looking at, at doing. Um, another important question at the moment is what happens with English tests if you're not able to take an IELTS exam at the, at the moment. So we have introduced a number of new pre-sessional English study modes to help students affected by this. So we have our five, nine, and 13 week pre-sessional programs fully online. And there's also possibilities to take them on campus for the five week option and a blended mixture again of online study and on campus study for the nine and 13 week options. Now, previously you would have required a secure English language test in order to take the, the on campus pre-sessional programs. These online programs, you won't need that. So pretty much most of the English language qualifications which Queen Mary accepts will be eligible to go on to these courses. And we also for the online pre-sessional programs, we also accept the Duolingo test um, and the TOEFL IBT Home Edition, which is accepted for the pre-sessional and for a large number of our academic programs as well. These um, individual requirements aren't currently published online. So if you do wish to know what the requirements are, please contact the Global Engagement Office at the email address that is on your screen now. And again, another question which is coming up regarding the COVID-19 outbreak is what is the policy on deposit deadlines and refunds? So the situation we're likely to change the terms and conditions on refund eligibility to account for unavoidable circumstances due to COVID-19. Again, this hasn't been published and ratified yet, but basically we're looking at if your course can't start on time, et cetera, then we should be able to refund any deposit that you may have paid. Again, another thing which students are finding is that their exams in their own country are being cancelled and maybe not able to complete their degree on time. What are your options in that case? 
So like I mentioned previously, we are trying to be as flexible as we can, utilizing these contingency options where possible. So around deferrals, later start dates, and again, with the deposits as well. So those are the slides from me. Um, I will just close my screen now and we can go to Petrova to begin the main presentation. Thank you very much. Is there a problem? Hello, apologies. Um, can you see my screen? Can you give me a thumbs up, please? <laughs> and you can hear me great. Sorry, apologies for that. Hi, everybody. My name is Petrova Lewis, and I work for the law school. I am the marketing manager there. And today I'm just going to briefly take you through um, some of the key elements of our law school and um, how our programs are structured, what are the different options for you, and we'll finish off talk, talking a little bit about our Paris campus because we have a campus in Paris. So um, my colleague Sam will have a chat with you about that online. So let me just go through my presentation. Um, Right. So just for a brief introduction, we'll look at things like the location, the LLM programs, our entry requirements and some of the other aspects of studying with us. Just a little bit about the law school. Our law school is one of the largest law schools in the UK. Um, not only in the UK, but also probably in Europe as well. Um, we have two parts of our school. We have a department of law, which teaches traditional subjects like human rights and immigration law. But we also have a commercial law centre, which is very um, famous. Our commercial law centre is about 40 years old and we're celebrating 40 years this year. We've also been recognised as the 32nd best law school worldwide by QS rankings. And we are part of, um, obviously, Queen Mary, which is an established Russell group. We have campuses not only in London, but also in Paris. Um, we used to have one in Greece, but that's not available um, at this current time. And we, have, we usually attract students from over 100 different countries. Turkey is actually one of our biggest countries um, that we attract students from. So we are very popular in Turkey. Just a little bit about our programs. Uh, we have up to about 27 different LLM options. And from these options, you can pick specialist programs. So your specialist programs can be in a particular legal area that you want your career to develop in, or you may want to just do a general standard LLM program. You can tailor your LLM at Queen Mary based on where you want your career to go. Our programs usually have three semesters, and we also have programs that are joint with our School of Economics and Finance and also with other universities um, in different international locations. Um, I mentioned a bit about our school. Our main campus is in London. Um, we have a, a centre of commercial law studies, which is in, our, in the central part of London called Holborn, which is CCLS. Our department is based in our campus in East London, and we have student accommodation as well, um, linked very closely to our campus. But I'm not going to talk too much about the location. I want to move on to our programs. Now, 
our LLM programs, we have specialized most of our programs so that when you study an LLM program, you can pick an area that is of interest to you and your modules will be based around those. So we have everything from um, commercial and corporate law down to energy and gas, um, immigration, insurance, intellectual property, comparative and international dispute resolution. Um, there is a vast array of choice. And this is one of the reasons why Queen Mary is actually a very popular university because there are lots of different options. We also have programs where we have flexible studies as well. So people can study flexible and we also do distance learning programs for those that want to do distance learning. Now, typically the LLM structure is a three semesters and within those three semesters, you will have your first and your second semester are taught modules. So this is the opportunity for you to take your modules and you will be taught those within two semesters. Now, typically the third semester would be a dissertation, but for this year going forward, there will be optional to it, it will be optional whether you want to do a dissertation or whether you want to do more modules. So we're making it a bit more flexible now for our students. There will be some LLM programs that it is compulsory to do a dissertation, but the vast majority of them will allow you to be able to do taught modules. So as long as you build up your credits, um, you can take those either through your taught modules or taught modules and a dissertation. Now, the LLM teaching in the UK, the LLM programme is one year. So we will teach that over the three semesters in one year. And you will have a mixture of lectures and seminars depending on your modules. And your weekly hours also will depend on your modules that you take and how, if you do a dissertation. But overall, we would expect students to study at least 40 hours a week. Now, that sounds like a lot. Um, they're not all spent in lessons, but you are required to do quite a lot of reading and self-study for a master's program because there is a lot to learn. Our lessons are usually take place between Mondays to Fridays, but depending on how many modules will depend on how many days you'll be actually in class. Now, just a little bit about the entry requirements. So for entry onto a master's program, you would, for a law one, you'd expect it to have an undergraduate law degree at 2-1. So that in the UK is basically what we call an upper second class degree. Now in Turkey, that would translate for a GPA between 2.8 and 3 out of 4. Now this will depend on which university you are graduating for. And my colleague, um, I, um, I, Josh, who spoke earlier, can advise best on that if you are uncertain about your institution and how that translates as a grade. Our English language requirements uh, for the LLM, we ask typically for IELTS 7 overall and it does include 7 in writing and a total 100 overall with 27 in writing. Now, if you're taking one of the other um, English tests, which my colleague um, mentioned earlier, um, there will be different scorings for those and you'll be able to find more details from those um, directly from him and from our website. But again, if you do not meet the full English um, scores, then please please always still apply because you may be eligible to do a pre-sessional. So if you don't quite meet the top grade, then we will look at offering pre-sessional English classes for you. So don't get too worried if you do not get seven in writing or you miss out by 0 0.5 because we can offer you the pre-sessional English. Now, one of the other things that we offer on our law programs is an in-sessional program. And this is a free additional lesson um, that will help you in understanding the academic English for law, legal research skills, critical thinking, planning a dissertation, writing your essays and preparing for studies. It will also help you with oral presentation and negotiation skills. So basically this lesson is really to help international students um, be able to 
get through an English master's program. If you think about some of the terminology that you use, how you interpret it in Turkey and how somebody interprets it in another country, say for instance, Cuba, would be very, could be quite different. So what we do on this program is try to get people to understand from every part of the world what is required and that academic understanding within English for English law. And so also what are our expectations on you in terms of your study skills and how you write essays, because it really does vary from different parts of the world. So this is a fantastic class and some people will, it will be compulsory for you to study it and for some it won't be so com it's not compulsory but i would always recommend that you attend a class because it is free and it is very very helpful in developing your skills and helping you to pass your llm now a little bit a bit more about um, our research and innovation queen mary is a research-led university which is why we're in the russell group in the School of Law, we have over 20 research centres. So basically, for all of the different specialisations, usually we will have academics leading worldwide research in those areas. And they will be working with governments, they work with other law schools, they work with industry to develop laws around every aspect of legal, um, within the legal field. Um, they have lots of events and they engage with research communities and they have significant research impact. Now, what does that mean to you as a student? Well, those are the academics that will be teaching you. So a, an academic that is leading in policy change in to do with telecommunications, that would be the same person that will be helping you and developing you on your LLM. So it's very important and our research is world recognized. So we've, um, we, we are um, prestigious in the type and quality of legal research that we're producing. Uh, we have lots of resources, libraries. Um, so you are, can have much of your resources online. So if you do have to start your program online for the first three months, do not think that you will not be able to access all of the legal information you need. We have digital resources and we have an online library. Now, beyond the classroom, we offer students um, lots of different opportunities um, and work experience um, placements through our career service. So our career service will help look at your CV, how you can get an international career. They host um, job fairs and lots of other interesting things for students to get involved with. We have projects such as Q Legal, where you can give free advice um, to startup companies around legal issues. So if you don't have any work experience, you can gain advice through that um, pr project. All of these, this particular project, though, you do have to apply for it. It is not guaranteed. We also offer you the opportunity to have a legal mentor. So we will pair students up with legal professionals to mentor you and help guide you through your career. Again, um, it's something that you apply for and we don't have space for everybody, but it's definitely growing and it's a very popular um, program. So just a bit about your entry application. If you are interested at studying at LLM at Queen Mary, um, you'll require a 2-1 law degree. Um, you'll need evidence of your English. You'll need to provide transcripts and our applications are open. Um, if you do decide, you can defer your place for a year. You decide actually I want to start the following year you can do that that's not a problem and I recommend that you use your agents for your application so your agent um, will in Turkey will help you with your application now why would you do Queen, choose Queen Mary um, lots of choice for modules we have the most modules available in Europe um, we are ranked, we are respected and known. We have many alumni based in Turkey and working in Turkish law, law firms. Um, we have locations in London and Paris, academic excellence. You can network with students all over the world. Um, we offer you a professional mentor and we have specialist legal career support.
Now, if you don't want, if you want to speak to somebody from Turkey that's graduated, then one of our ambassadors is available online, not on this session, but through our website. You can email her, and you can speak to her a bit more about what it was like and how her career has progressed um, as a Turkish undergraduate student studying an LLM at Queen Mary. I'm just going to pass you on to my colleague. Um, who will talk to you a bit about the LLM in Paris. I was going to show you a video, but I think I'm going to cut that short because of time. Okay, thank you. Oh, hold on. Thanks, Petrova. Thank you. Are you, are you playing? No, I, I can't get it to play. Okay, no worry. problem. Um, um, I will, I'll share my screen with them. Um, hi everybody, Mahaba. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully you can now see my screen. One moment. How can I do this? Ah, there we go. Now you should be able to see my screen. Yeah? Okay, perfect. <laughs> thank you very much for bearing with me. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the programs that we offer in Paris. As you've heard, we have um, a campus over there as well as in London. Uh, the LLMs that we offer there are predominantly, uh, you know, very, very similar to the, to the offering in London. Obviously the location is different and there are a few nuances around studying uh, with Queen Mary, not in the UK. Um, so the LLM, uh, program suite in Paris launched uh, back in January 2013. So we're relatively young, although uh, we have two intakes per year, uh, which makes us do everything twice per year. Uh, so we're quite experienced at delivering our programs over there now. Um, so you can start with us in September or in January. Um, and the program is offered one year on a full time basis or two years on a part time basis. Um, our partner, as you can see in the corner there, is the University of London Institute in Paris. So the programme is taught and delivered um, by Queen Mary academics um, and supported by Queen Mary staff, um, but delivered at the University of London premises in Paris. Um, and we're based in the 7th arrondissement. I don't know if you're familiar with Paris, but we're just around the corner from the Eiffel Tower, which is quite nice when you're looking out of the library window and you can see the Eiffel Tower. It's, it's quite an attractive picture. Um, the teaching uh, method is slightly different and the timetable is obviously different um, in the Paris programme. Um, we run an intensive block teaching uh, timetable, which means that your modules will be uh, more condensed um, into several day times or perhaps across some evenings, even some Saturdays. Um, this also appeals to our students who are working at the same time. Um, and we have... Um, uh, a non-specialist program, uh, which is international business law, where you can choose across the full range of all of our modules, um, or you can decide to specialize in uh, banking, dispute resolution, energy, uh, intellectual property, or media and telecommunications. The other program that we offer in Paris is a double LLM, which is in partnership with uh, La Sorbonne Paris 1. Um, and that started just a, a couple of years ago, back in January 2018. This programme is particularly niche. Um, it's an 18 month programme, full time only in, in that basis and a January intake only. Um, the entrance requirements, actually for, for all the Paris programmes, the entrance requirements are the same as for the London programmes. The slight difference with the double LLM is that because it's a bilingual programme, obviously you must also be fluent in French. Um, although for Turkish students, we find that it's quite an attractive programme because uh, a lot of Turkish students have gone through the French high school system anyway, so already have the French language. Um, this programme uh, has the advantage of exiting with two qualifications, an LLM in international business law from Queen Mary in Paris in the English language and an LLM in French and European law from the Sorbonne in Paris and delivered in French language. So what might you expect from a CCLS Paris experience as opposed to a London one? Um, many of the, the facilities, many of the um, uh, 
the the added value that you'll receive from your LLM, that's uh, majoritively the same. Um, obviously, it's a respected and renowned qualification. You will have the same teachers. You'll have the same access to, to the academic staff um, as you would if you were studying in London, for example. So you've got all of that research excellence behind you, um, regardless of where you study with Queen Mary. Um, as we mentioned, we've got the two intakes, September and January. That's just a, a personal preference. You, you may not be ready in September for whatever reason, um, or perhaps you haven't yet had the chance to take your English language test and come January, perhaps you'll be more ready. Um, one thing that we're extremely proud of in the Paris programme is the diversity of our student body. Um, for a, a small programme, because uh, obviously we're much smaller than the London programme, uh, we have a, a very, very international student body, uh, which is one of the things I love best about my job, to be honest. Um, for example, in the past academic year, we welcomed 36 students um, and they represented 22 different nationalities. Um, and obviously some of those were Turkish. Um, and those smaller class sizes uh, really develop closer relationships with uh, your colleagues, with each other, um, and with your academic staff and your professional services staff as well. So, um, I mean, I, I coordinate this, these programs and I know every single one of our students, um, which is something that I value, but I think the students value that as well. Um, because we have this great community feeling, uh, we have a very strong alumni network. Uh, so our alumni very often, uh, I mean, if, if they're around in Paris, they very often come back to our events um, and sometimes they give our, um, our events, they deliver our lectures. Um, and this also helps to, to lead on to career opportunities um, and your legal network. Um, a lot of our current students are doing internships with previous students. So we've got this nice uh, rolling network uh, of, of internships, which is, uh, again, uh, value added to your LLM um, and it's also a, an advantage I think of doing the program in Paris because we have this intensive block teaching um, and uh, an intensive timetable there are periods where you might not be in the classroom for maybe a week or so um, of course you'll be in the library right but in that time uh, you may be able to do an internship or you know perhaps you're managing I don't know, your family life or your, your job alongside your studies. Um, but the one of the advantages of the Paris programme is that we facilitate uh, a student who wants to study and do something else at the same time or who may, may have to do something else at the same time. Um, so essentially, I want to um, make it clear to you that the experience that you get in Paris, you'll have the same uh, Queen Mary faculty, the same quality, you'll have the same support systems uh, in London and Paris, you exit with the same qualification, um, it's just a different experience in another of, of the world's most amazing cities. <laughs> um, I want to just leave you with these words from one of our previous Turkish students. So Nisanor studied economic law, uh, sorry, dispute resolution and economic law with us a couple of years ago, um, but I particularly like what she had to say about the programme. Um, so I just wanted to share this with you. So she said that the LLM programme in Paris was a unique step for her, which I think is lovely, um, to build her career in international arbitration. Um, and she appreciated the, the structure and the design of the, of the programme. Um, the professors provide not only theoretical approaches to the field, but also combine this with practical examples from their experiences. So the majority of um, the School of Law's academic staff also have professional experience. Um, Besides the faculty, we had a lot of guest lectures from international arbitration institutions and from reputable law firms. And that was one of the things that she enjoyed best about the LLM. Then, from the student sort of more personal side, less academic side, um, she appreciated that the students were from all around the world and made wonderful friendships, which will keep us connected in the future. Um, having people from diverse backgrounds and jurisdictions provoked multidimensional approaches and discussions on arbitration and enabled all of us to think comparatively. And it was a big pleasure for her to be part of this multicultural and international QMUL community. Um, so these are the things that I think our students really do value about the programme that we offer in Paris. Um, and again, they are they're the things that we try our best to, to offer to our students as well. So there's our contact details. If you have any questions about Paris, I'm online now, obviously, you're very welcome to, to ask questions. Um, or please, you know, if you want to go into a little bit more detail, then I'm happy to, to answer anything by, by email. 
um, please feel free to get in touch. Thank you. But try to Thank stop sharing if I can. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for that. Yes, Sam. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be open to taking questions, so please feel free to type questions in. I noticed someone had asked about scholarships, um, and my colleague has sent a link, but I mean, it might be of interest to many students um, that there are some scholarship opportunities um, to study law at Queen Mary. Um, we have an international bursary uh, for a select number of international countries and Turkey actually falls into that and you're awarded um Josh can you remind me is it two up to two thousand two thousand yeah I think there's forty of them available. Yeah um, so, get yeah. up to mm. sorry sorry keep tripping over each other. Yeah but they're up to two thousand there's forty available of them and it's for students um that are on course to achieving a first class. So if we're looking at Turkey, the GPA between 3.4 and 3.6. Josh, can I just ask, um, with that bursary, that international bursary, um, have they extended the deadline uh, because of COVID? I haven't been sent anything specifically. It, it's extremely likely, I would yeah. say. So but, still apply. You don't have to apply for it set separately it is based on your application so you just put in your regular application and they will assess your application form so it's not a separate um, scholarship that you have to apply but there is another scholarship is it the Jean Monet one as well? Jean Monet, can, yeah. Can so you know a little bit more about that one can you? Well that? we've we've welcomed uh, Jean Monet students uh, for several years at, at Queen Mary um, it's a, a European uh, scholarship, so the, there is a question over whether or not uh, we will still be able to take part in the Jean Monnet program, um, because of course, you know, we're leaving the EU. Um, so I, I don't have I don't have the answer. I don't know whether anybody Turkish has the answer, um, but it's something that that uh, we expect to hear more about. Um, you know, once the once the position. Uh, of the of the of the UK leaving the EU becomes a little bit clearer. Mm. Um, if if we are able to continue to to accept Jean Monnet scholars, then of course we would love to because they, they are exceptional students, mm. and we're you know we're we're honoured that they choose us, and and you know we we definitely want to continue mm. to accept them, but yeah. that will be out of our hands, unfortunately. Okay. Thank you. Someone has asked a question, when is the application time? So for those that are now, now yeah, <laughs> basically yeah. our applications are open for um, September programmes for London and Paris, um, but like I said previously, even if you're uncertain about whether you can definitely commit to this year, obviously there's a lot of uncertainty for everyone. Still make an application. We do not charge you for submitting an application. And if you are offered a place, you can defer it for one year. So you can ask, or you can defer it till January as well. So if you're very interested, you know, it's always still worth submitting that application and securing a place. I wonder if I could uh, address this question here about the about the two two. Okay. Um, somebody's asked whether a candidate who has a two two could be admitted um, with a little bit of work experience and some strong references. Um, my advice would be that it depends on um, how low or high the two two is, how close you are to a two one. Um, I would suggest that you send your application. You'll need to include your transcripts in any case, so make sure that they are, you know, detailed. Um, include, uh, yeah, your your strong references. Um, you'll need to include your CV anyway, so make it very clear how relevant your work experience is. Um, and if you're including a personal statement, there you have the opportunity to highlight again um, quite how relevant your work experience is and and, and what exactly it is that you um, you know plan to do. Um, and you can explain there, uh, you know, how um, how you think you are a, a good fit for the LLM. Um, and it may very well be that the admissions office are able to consider you hmm. based even with a with a two two. Hmm. Um, I can't give you a guarantee. Yeah. <laughs> also, if you have other law qualifications, 
then mm. also make sure that those are submitted as well. And just like my colleague said, in your supporting statement, you have to be very clear and articulate about your work experience. Um, and it has to relate to the specialisation as well that you're applying for and the legal area. So, yeah, we will review it, but it is literally on a case by case. Are there any other questions? Because I can't see many. Yeah. So the other question that kind of came through on. is... Um, just about what would I need to do in order to train as a lawyer in the UK so if we could just kind of talk briefly about separating out kind of like an LLM compared to going and doing the GDL or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, in the UK um, the LLM doesn't qualify you as a lawyer it's not a qualifying like legal practitioners program so the LLM is an academic program that will give you the knowledge and skills within a legal specialist area and it's a recognized academic qualification now if a student wants to um, practice law in the UK um, they will have to either take a, like a conversion course which we don't offer at Queen Mary or they would have to do a training course, which is usually like an, what we call an LPC program, or and that will require some vocational traineeship. Again, we do not offer those programs at Queen Mary, so that would be at another university. And then you are qualified, once you pass those qualifications, you're, you can, you're a qualified lawyer and you can practice in the UK. So the LLM really is just a, is a qualification that will give you a deep and thorough understanding over a particular legal area um, or industry that you actually want to operate in. Um, if anyone else has anything to add, then please feel free. No, I think I think you've covered it, but I've just noticed um, another question come in um, uh, regarding admissions again. Um, if somebody has a double degree, uh, a combined BA and LLB, does it give an advantage for admission? Um, it, it kind of depends on your results, on, on your mm. scores. Um, it, it doesn't really give you an advantage or, or a disadvantage. Um, what the admissions office are going to be looking for particularly, um, I mean, it, it, it sort of depends on the qualification, whether it's a BA in, let's say, um, German language and an LLB, um, whether they're uh, two separate subjects or, or whether you've done some sort of combined program still in law the admissions office are going to be looking predominantly at your law qualifications and your law experience not work experience but um, academic background so as long as you have um, an LLB um, and preferably with a 2-1 uh, you said a GPA 2.8 to, to 3 I think um, then then the admissions office are are likely to to be able to consider you favorably um so it, it, it's sort of i, I realize my answer is not particularly clear but i think it's because i don't fully understand exactly what kind of qualification you've taken there but just be assured that the admissions office will be most interested in the, uh, in the law that you've taken mm. Mm. i hope that helps yeah. just um, just on that quickly sorry um yeah, just to kind of clear up, because with the in terms of the 2.8 to 3.0, so why it's different for some universities than it is for others. So we would accept a GPA of 2.8 from the top 25 universities in Turkey and then 3.0 from any other university, essentially. So if you want to double check whether your university is in the top 25 or something like that, I'll put my email address in the chat section, look through the transcripts and we'll be able to, I'll be able to advise you on that. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, just one of the other things I, I, I want to say um, to our audience is that we do, we, Queen Mary, especially CCLS, our corporate commercial law school, has typically always attracted quite a lot of students from Turkey. Um, we've been very popular and we're very privileged um, to have had a big Turkish community come into our law school. But I mean, what that means in particular, because we have quite a strong alumni network, is that once you, if you come to Queen Mary and go back, you can tap into that alumni legal network um, within Queen Mary. And there are times where we come 
come back to Turkey, us um, the university, and we host alumni events. And typically, we have um, lawyers flying in from, you know, from from other areas within Turkey, not just in Istanbul, but coming in to network each other, um, to build links, build contacts. So one of the things that you know you'll be tapping into. Um, is that network and that is very valuable for employment opportunities and 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 making links with lawyers um, across um, Turkey as well as internationally. It's just another question coming about how strict we are with the minimum requirement of GPA for acceptance. I think we've covered that in. Yeah. In um, yeah, you have. To, I mean, if you're if you're just below, it just depends on your university. It depends on your work experience. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're significantly below, it's going to be quite difficult because we do have a, you know, we do have a standard that we have to continue to uphold. But we will review people on a case by case. So, you know. Please put in strong applications, strong um, work experience, um, and the school will ref will review those. Any more questions from anyone? Okay. I think they know everything That's already. Fine. <laughs> We've told everything. We've both, me and Sam, have put our email addresses in the chat section as well. So as as what typically happens with these events, you'll probably think of a really great question as soon as everything's all switched off. So please take our email uh, email addresses down. We'll be there to help you. Um, like I say, I'm the regional manager for Europe, which includes Turkey. So really, I could be your first point of contact at the university. And yeah, with your applications, we'll be able to help as much as we can. Okay. Well, in case anything doesn't look like anything else is coming through. Okay, then we can probably wrap up the session, then, can't we? Yeah. Thank I you. So. Thank yeah. you so much for but attending for today. Everything. Thank you very much, Josh, Thank you. and Petrova. It was a great uh, presentation. If they have any questions, they can get in touch with you uh, on your personal emails. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks Bye. Thank you for organizing as well. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.